Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Art Tree Goes Almost Live. This is our 20th episode, and today I'm going to be talking about tints and shades. This is the fourth part of my Color My World series, and we are going to be talking about mixing white and black with the colors that we've already talked about previously. And I'm going to start by showing you what we're going to be doing. We'll be making an abstract painting of a flower garden if you are older or if you are younger. This is a beautiful abstract painting of one flower. When we talk about abstract art, we're talking more about the shapes and colors. And if we think about the shape of a flower, the flower itself is usually a circle, not always, but we can actually depict a flower as a circle. I've added a stem and some leaves. And in the case of the flower garden, we have these beautiful sort of mysterious colors in the background. Those are the shades. And then the flowers themselves are done with these sort of pastel colors. And we make those by mixing tints. So whenever we, we mix white with a color, we get a tint. And whenever we mix black with a color, we get a shade. And we will talk about that in greater detail in just a minute. But first of all, let's talk about what you will be needing for this lesson. You will need one piece of paper for your painting. You may need a pencil. You don't need a pencil. You can do the whole thing with painting and a paintbrush. We need some paints. I'm, I'm using tempera paints for this class, and these are Crayola washable tempera paints. I have tempera paints in the primary colors of yellow, red, and blue, and the secondary colors of orange, green, and violet. Now we talked about the tertiary colors as well when we mixed our color wheel, but we're not actually going to be making the tertiaries today. We'll have plenty to do with just the primaries and the secondaries mixing with white and black. Now you can see in this case, I have a lot of white on my palette. My palette in this case is just a plastic lid and a smaller plastic lid here for mixing the shades. I have only a little bit of black with these colors when I mix the shades. I have a lot of white with these colors when I mix the tints. And that's because white is a weak color, so we need a lot more of the white. Black is a very strong color, so we need only a little bit of black when we mix it with other colors. And you'll see that happening as we get to this project. You will probably remember your color wheel, and it's great if you can find it and have it close by for this lesson. You will also need some paper towels and two containers of clean water for rinsing your brush. For the most part, we can clean our brush by gently wiping the excess paint with a paper towel. In some cases, we'll also want to rinse it well in water. If you are doing the single flower, you may also want a larger brush because some of these areas you can paint much faster with a larger brush. You can see there's a lot of blue and there's a lot of green. So in these areas, I would actually use the larger brush. If you are doing the flower garden, we can do the whole thing with a small brush. This is my favorite brush, as I've said before. This is the uh, brush that came with the Crayola 8-pan set of watercolors. And I use that brush for pretty much all of my teaching demonstrations. 
I also have an empty bowl, which I will be using to throw away my, my paper towel pieces after I wipe off my brush. You should have a place to put your, your uh, used paper towels. And you will also want to cover your workspace. In this case, I have a mat on my white tablecloth because I don't want to get all of my paints on the tablecloth, which will certainly happen if I don't have a mat in place. All right, so we are going to be starting with mixing uh, tints. And tints, again, are the colors that you make when you mix white with another color. I'm going to start with yellow because it's the lightest color. And by the way, you can see that I set out my palette in the same way as my color wheel. So we've got yellow at the top. Across from yellow, we have violet. Next to yellow, we have orange and green. And then across from orange, we have blue. And across from green, we have red. You can see that I've got a lot of yellow and just a little bit of violet. And I have a fair amount of orange and green and not so much red and blue. And this is because these colors are weaker and these colors are stronger. So if I'm going to be mixing a tint of yellow, I'll need a lot of yellow mixed into some of the white. If I'm mixing a tint of violet, I'll need just a little bit of violet mixed into the white. So here we go. We're going to start by mixing a tint of yellow. And you see we have one amount of white, which means it's going to be shared among the other five colors. We have yellow and five more colors. So we're going to start with yellow. I'm going to pull some of that yellow into some of the white. Not the whole thing. I'm not mixing the whole thing. I'm just mixing some of it. And I'm going to pull enough white into some of the yellow that I'll be able to see a nice light yellow color forming. And you can see that color right now. You can see that this yellow is lighter than the yellow we started with. This is a tint of the yellow that we started with. It's a nice tint of yellow. So I'm going to start by painting some circles. Because if we're thinking about abstract flowers, we can also think about painting the centers of those flowers as circles. And I'll probably make some of them yellow and some of them a tint of orange. So here we go with our tint of yellow. And I'm just sort of randomly putting them on the paper so that it will look like a nice bunch of flowers when I'm done. Put one more small one maybe right here. Maybe one more here going out of the going out of the um, view of the paper. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to wipe off the excess. Because yellow is a very weak color, I'll be able to go right into the orange and not worry about the tiny bit of yellow that is left in my brush. So I'm going to take some white and move it over there to the orange. And I'm going to pull some of that orange into the white and some of the white into the orange. And I'm looking for a nice tint of orange. And see how I'm keeping the white and the orange across from each other so that way I'll have the ability to get the white into the red 
we're just going to mix, go around the color wheel here with the whites, mixing tints as we go. Now to make the circle, I'm just going to go outside the center of the flower that I've already painted. And of course, they don't need to be perfectly round. Flowers are different shapes. Sometimes they're not round. Sometimes they are. I'm also going to make a couple more centers. So maybe some of these other flowers have orange centers. Okay, and I'm going to make, let's make this one. a tint of orange as well. So I'm just pushing down gently and pulling around. I'm going to mix up a little bit more, bring some of my white this way, some of my orange into the white. Now because we have paint all over the paper, you have to be careful not to put your hand down. You should be able to hold the paintbrush without putting your hand on the paper. If you hold it up, you'll keep your hand out of the paint, out of the wet paint. And I'm going to wipe off this color. And I'm going to make up some pink. Pink is a tint of red. I'm going to pull some white this direction and some red into the white. So pink is a tint of red. And red is a strong color compared to white. So I I don't need very much red to get a nice pink color. Start with a little bit. If you mix all this red into the white, you're going to have a color that's nearly red. Red is much stronger than white. So some of these circles are going to have pink petals, which we are just going to suggest by making circles around the centers of these flowers. We're not painting the individual petals. It's an abstract sort of flower. Just take your time with this. If it seems like I'm going too fast, you can pause the video and just go ahead and, and make some more pink and continue making circles around these flowers, around the flower centers. You can always pause the video. I think I'll put some right here too. And we're just going to make these flowers even larger. I'm going to wipe 
the excess pink out of my brush and I'm going to make a tint of violet, which we often call lavender. Pulling some of the white into the violet and a little bit of violet into the white. Violet is a very strong color compared to white, so we have to be careful. If we pull equal amounts of violet and white together, we're going to get something that looks almost like the color we started with. If you find that some of the colors that you laid down before are getting mixed in with your new layer, it's okay. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of the blue and make a light blue. Blue is another very strong color compared to white. So a little bit of blue gets pulled into the white. And there's a lot more white mixed into that blue. Now some of these flowers are overlapping. So I'll just stop the circle right there.
And the last color is going to be a tint of green. I'm going to pull the white into the green. And I'm going to use this color to make some stems, maybe some leaf shapes. Very abstract. Maybe there's a leaf showing here. More stem. Stem. I have a big empty spot here, so I'm just going to put a leaf there. Oops. I'm just going to put a little something in this empty spot. I need a little flower here. All right. So now we're going to clean our brush and we're going to be thinking about shades. Like I told you at the beginning of this class, shades are the color that you make when you mix black with any other color. It's called a shade. So I, if I mix yellow and black together, I will have a shade of yellow. Now again, as in mixing tints, you have to think about what color is strong and what color is weak. And in general, you're going to have all your other colors are going to be somewhat weaker than black. But the violet and the blue won't be as different as the yellow and the black. So if I pull the yellow and the black together, I know that I'll need just a little bit of black and a lot of yellow because yellow is a weak color and black is very strong in comparison. So I will need more yellow and a little bit of black. And look what color it makes. These uh, shades, are kind of a mysterious collection of colors. They're very mysterious. So what we're going to do now with the shades is we're going to use them in the background. We've got tints on our paper so far and they make sort of a, uh, a beautiful abstract flower garden. 
and pastel colors. Now we're going to use our shades as background colors. So we're going to put a little bit of a shade of yellow here and a little bit there. It's up to you. You can decide where you want to put your shades. Maybe do three or four spots of each. So this is my second spot of a shade of yellow. Maybe I'll make this shape here. A shade of yellow. And maybe a little bit down here. I'm trying to spread them out on the paper. I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse. And I'm going to mix a shade of orange next. So I'm going to take a little bit of black. And I'm going to mix it in with that orange, not all of the orange and not all of the black. Just mix a bit. And that way I can go back and forth. I can pull a little bit more black into it, or a little bit more orange. And let's see what color this is. It's kind of the color of flower pots. Maybe we call that terracotta. So slightly brown color. And if some of your wet paints mix a little bit with the colors that you're putting on, it's all right. If you want, you can let them dry first, but I kind of like that mixing. Okay, so I've got four areas now with a tint of orange. And I'm going to move on to the red. And I'm going to, in the same way, pull a little bit of black towards the red. And I'll start pushing the red towards the black and mixing. You can pull a little bit more red or a little bit more black, depending on how I feel the color looks. If I want it to be blacker, I'll pull more black. If I want it to be redder, I'll pull more red. But I like this combination here, so I'll put some of that color, sort of like a, a brick red. Maroon, a deep dark red, very mysterious color.
Okay, we're going to go on to a shade of violet. And you'll find you'll need more black because violet is already a dark color. It makes this beautiful, deep, rich purple color, like purple velvet. Notice how I'm keeping my hand up, trying to hold my brush somewhat vertically so that I don't get my hand into the wet paint. Now into the blue. It's like a stormy sky color. And let's make a shade of green. The deep, deep green, deep, dark forest green.
and just have a quick visual check. Make sure that everything is painted as I want. It's going to be a bit tricky because I want to go back into those tints just a little bit after being in the shades. It's kind of tricky because we don't want to get our little bit of leftover black into our tints. We all know it's hard to rinse black out of your paintbrush completely. couple places where I want to add a little bit more of that blue tint. And there we go. Abstract flower garden. The flowers painted with tints of color and the background painted with shades. Now, if you are middle schooler or high school age or adult, this is a lot of fun. If you are an elementary student, elementary age student, you might find this quite frustrating um, because it's, it's a lot of control. It's a lot of brush control and mixing control. But this is super fun. And let me just show you how to do that very quickly here. I'm going to take another piece of paper. And I know you young kids love to paint things in rainbow colors. And so this, let me just wipe my hands off. This is a lot of fun because you can actually paint colors like a rainbow. You can paint your flower like a rainbow, just missing out the green because we're going to be using the green for the stem and leaves. So let's see how that works. We're going to start with our tint of yellow. Remember we made that tint by pulling a lot of yellow and a lot of white together. Because yellow is a weak color, we have to use quite a bit of it. We're going to mix that tint of yellow. We're going to put that right here. Nice big circle. We're going to wipe off our brush and we're going to go into the orange. We're going to mix a tint of orange. And we are going to hold our brush up and go around that circle of yellow. And this can be a bit tricky, I know, but just do your best. Around we go. I'm going to wipe off my brush. Remember how to make pink? Pink is a tint of red, 
So we're going to pull some white towards the red and a little bit of red towards the white because red is much stronger than white. We're going to take that pink and we're going to go around the outside of that tint of orange. I've got a little bit of my orange mixing in with the pink, but that's all right. Wipe off the brush. And now comes the lavender, which is a tint of violet. So I'm going to pull my white towards the violet and just a little bit of violet into the white. Not a lot because violet is a very strong color. We don't need much. And we're going to put that violet around the pink. Just pull your brush gently. Remember, don't scrub your brush into the paper. Just pull it gently along and that releases the paint. And if you're used to working with watercolors, you'll see that the tempera paints are quite a bit thicker and they're actually a lot of fun to work with. The reason we're using tempera paints for this class is that we don't really use white watercolor paint and we need white to make the tints. If you were making pink with watercolor paints you would just dilute the paint very much with water. You would dilute the red with water and then the white of the paper will show through the paint. And so you're getting white from the paper and red from the diluted paint. And white and red makes pink. So with watercolor, we make pink in a slightly different way. But I want to show you with temper paints because then you can really see how the white changes the color of the paint. Okay, with our big flower here, we're just going to make the tint of blue. We're going to take our white, quite a bit of white and not so much blue because white is a weak color and blue is very strong. So I don't want much blue. And we're going to pull that color along the outside of the lavender. I hope I've got enough made up there. Got a tiny bit of green in it, but that's kind of pretty. Oh, it's got even more green in it now. And now we're going to go into our tint of green. We're going to make a stem. Maybe a couple of leaves. And now we're going to make our 
mysterious background color with shades of green and blue. So we're going to mix up black with green, first of all. Let's mix up the blue because we want to do the top first. And I'm going to put a little bit more blue and black on my palette there. Going to mix a nice tint of blue, I mean, sorry, a shade of blue, and it's going to be a deep, deep blue. Let's see how that looks. Look at that. Oh, it's almost black. Let's put a little bit more blue in there. Now you can see it's going to take me quite a while to paint with this little brush, but if you also have a bigger brush, it will go a lot faster. Let's just put some of that color on with the bigger brush. I'm using the smaller brush to go around the flower and then the larger brush to fill in the big areas of color, like right here. Almost done. Here it's going to be the small brush because I've got some tight spaces. And we're just going to finish up with a tint of green. Sorry, a shade of green. Oh dear. A shade of green. So that means we need black and green together. I'll just add a little bit more black to my palette. Pull some of the black into the green some of the green into the black. And we're going to put some of that deep green color down here.
And there we have it. Tints and shades for younger artists. So I hope you enjoyed that class on tints and shades. Remember when you mix tints, the white is not a strong color. It's a very weak color, which means you need a lot more white mixed into what other colors you are making tints of. If you are making shades, you have to be careful by uh, not using too much black because black is a very strong color. So if you make um, a shade of orange, you will want to have not very much black into your orange. If you set it up so that you can pull a little bit of black at a time into that color that you're making a shade of, then you can pull a little bit more, say, of the orange into the black, a little bit more of the black into the orange, back and forth, back and forth, until you get the color that you want. If you just take a bunch of black and mix it into the orange, pretty soon you have a very dark color that is difficult to bring back to a shade of orange. It's just going to look pretty much like a black color. All right, so that's it for this class. I hope you enjoyed color mixing as much as I do. And remember to be safe, be happy, be creative, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.